Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to do a little bit different video than I usually do. We're actually going to go break down a lake map and show you where to fish. So we're going to be talking about post-spawn bass today. I just fished a tournament on Lake Erie this past weekend. I took fourth place and we were catching post-spawn bass. What a lot of places elsewhere in here in Pennsylvania have post-spawn bass as well. And this was actually a comment from one of my other videos where I said, if you guys want to see anything specific, go ahead and leave a comment on that question and I'll turn it into a video in a later video. So today's featured comment is going to be from Jason here. He asked, how would I break down Lake Erie for post-spawn bass fishing? So we're gonna look at a map of Lake Erie today, but this doesn't only apply to Lake Erie. It will most definitely apply to all of the Great Lakes and anywhere that has smallmouth. So places like uh, Lake Champlain, any of that type of stuff where you have smallmouth bass that eventually go post-spawn. Um, some of this stuff might even work for largemouth as well. So don't click off the video yet. You might learn something from today while we're breaking down this lake map. But we're gonna walk through some of the stuff that I was targeting this weekend. And if you want to be the next featured comment as well, Go ahead and leave a comment down below on any question you might have fishing wise, and it might just turn into the next video. So let's get right into the map here. We're gonna start talking about some post-spawn bass. Okay, so we're gonna jump right into this map here on Navionics. You can see I'm looking at Presque Isle Bay here. Uh, this is where I fished my tournament this past weekend. We launched out of Marina Bay right here, uh, and I actually ended up fishing out on the lake the majority of the time. I did target some fish back in the bay here, uh, but we actually did not catch any back in there. Um, I caught all my fish off the main lake. Like I said, there was a lot of post spawners. The number one thing, if you've never used a lake map here or you're looking for a way to find some lake maps, my number one tool I go to is Navionics web app right here. Um, I'll leave the link down below if you ever want to check it out or if you already know how to use it and have used it before. This is what I use pretty much anytime I go to a new lake or just trying to figure out what fish are going to be or anything like that. So number one trick with this map before we do anything. You can see right here, it's an okay map. It has some contour lines, but it could be a little more detailed. If that ever happens, you come down right here to this bottom left corner here. You, this is on just the Navionics map. If you turn on sonar chart, now you can see this looks way better. And if we zoom in, that's what we're looking for. We got a lot of detail on this map now. So. The first thing we're gonna do when we get into breaking down a map for smallmouth, you gotta find, or any bass really, you gotta find where these fish are gonna spawn. That's the number one thing you need to know when you're looking for post spawn. Uh, these fish are not gonna travel far right off the bat after the post spawn, especially when it's really, really close. I've been catching spawning fish on Lake Erie the past two weeks. There was still a few left, but there was a lot of empty beds, which means I knew they were post spawn, but they had to be close by. So I started looking for areas that were very close by and where these fish would have gone. So best places that the fish spawn on Lake Erie, obviously your number one spot is gonna be Thompson Bay, Misery Bay, anything inside the bay here, right in front of this big flat inside the monument. Places fish are going to spawn is going to be somewhere that is protected from the wind, protected from anything else that could potentially harm them there, just a really protected cove that has a flat area and has the right places for them to spawn. So you need some rock. Sometimes a lot of these places like Misery Bay and Thompson will go grow grass later in the summer and that will allow those fry to actually grow up and have a place to hide or feed when they're uh, growing up. So places like that are what you're looking for. This has rock and sand as well, which allows them to make beds where they'll actually spawn. So anything inside the bay here, you can see Big Ben's another good area. These, these are all flats that the number one wind that comes in Lake Erie is like a west wind. So it's gonna blow this way, southwest, west wind. Oftentimes, if they get a north wind as well, or even a northeast, any of those would be protected here in Misery Bay. So that's what you're looking for. That's how you find where these fish spawn. So now you have spawning fish here, spawning fish here, spawning fish here. Those are all the places these things are spawning now. Now post spawn comes, where are they gonna go? You're gonna wanna look for places. What I was targeting this weekend up there was eight to 12 foot of water 
and rock piles, what I was looking for. I was looking for something different. So I'll talk about a little bit how to find what's really key once we look at some of these areas. Uh, that was, I was making targeted casts at certain places and I was catching fish off those spots. I wasn't doing what they call the eerie drag, going out there, just throwing your baits out there and drifting. You will catch fish that way, but if you make targeted casts on stuff, I was hitting spot to spot to spot, just throwing a couple casts at each spot and I was getting bit that way. The first thing we're gonna do is look for where these fish are gonna go. So anything that migrates into the bay has to come back out of the bay. First post-spawn area is going to be the shoot wall here. A lot of people don't like fishing it, some people do. Fish will get post-spawn on this. They'll spawn here, they'll come right here, they'll work their way out this wall, and they'll work all the way down this wall here to get back out on the main lake. So there will always be post-spawn fish on this wall right here. There's absolutely fish on that right now. There's also, what you're looking for is an area that they can stop on that's a little bit deeper water. It doesn't have to be super deep. Some of these fish will actually get out there really, really deep this time of year in 15 to 25 foot of water already. Uh, but for the most part, some of these fish are gonna be in eight to 12. That's what I was looking for. That's kind of where you wanna be. That's the first place they're gonna stop. They're gonna spawn, go to eight to 12 foot of water and eventually work their way out even deeper. So you want something that has a steep drop or a hump or an irregularity, anything out there that they can stop on. So right here you can see they come off this flat, there's a steep drop right here and it's five foot up on top. This is what you're looking for right here. This little drop, you would sit out on here and throw up onto this drop and bring your bait down this drop here and those fish will be waiting. You can see this is all pretty much a straight line and then there's a little point here that gets a lot tighter on contour lines. Those are the places these fish are gonna stop on stuff that looks like that. So now let's look out on the lake and see what's actually good out here because this is where the fish are actually getting this time of year. Most of the fish are back out on the main lake. There's some left in the bay, there's some left in Thompson. These post-spawn fish are now getting out on the main lake and they're gonna start making their migrations off to wherever they came from. Some of them go back to Ohio, some of them will go up to Northeast in New York. Like these fish do migrate from a far way away, some of them don't. Some of them only make a short migration and they'll live right outside the bay all year round. So places that I'm looking for out here, again, you're looking for some type of irregularity. So right here, is a perfect area that sticks out to me. There's a giant point that sticks out. There's a flat right here they can spawn if they want. They'll, there will be fish that spawn on the main lake. And then the flat dumps into deeper water right here. So this point that sticks out right here is a key area. Same over here, you have a big flat and then a point that drops into deeper water. So all I was doing was looking at my map, looking at these contour lines, just going down the lake and seeing what I could find. So as I would go down, all of a sudden, bam, I have a big flat right here with a big point that sticks out with a flat spot right up on top. I would graph all of this and that would be what I was looking for. Same here, there's a big shoal that runs right down the middle here all of this could be potential on either side of this. So I would just graph up and down this line, which brings me to how I was finding these fish. So the key to finding fish on Lake Erie, what I would do is I'd go out there, I'd set my side scan on 80 foot. If you'd like a detailed tutorial on how to actually go out and graph for these fish, leave a comment down below and I can show you a little bit more on how to use your graphs to find this stuff. I'd set my side scan out to 80 foot on each side. So I'd be covering 160 foot of water as I was going down this break here. I would put my down scan on, I'd put my 2D on, and then I'd have my map up so I'd know I was following the right line. And all I would do is just slowly idle down this place and anywhere that looked good. If there was a point that stuck out, a hump, anything that looked different than the regular straight lines of Lake Erie. I would graph down that even on the regular straight lines of Lake Erie, not everything is mapped. So if there's a straight line, just go ahead and graph down it and see what you can find. I actually ran all the way up to the cribs on Lake Erie in practice, and then I idled the entire way back to the bay. I did not put my boat back on plane. All I did was idle the entire way back to the bay and saw what I could find. And I marked all of it, and then I would turn around and fish on it, and most of it had fish. So what I would do is I would idle, most of your side scan will just look like flat shale rock. It'll look like nothing. It'll have some squiggles in the bottom, whatever was cut out when the great glaciers went through, but it looks very flat. 
what I was looking for was you would see a physical drop. You'd see the shadow that would cause the drop, any type of little ledge or drop out there. That's an irregularity those fish are gonna hide on. But more importantly, what I was looking for, it was like a pebbly gravel or a boulder. Something like that was key. If you found a big boulder, you could cast that boulder and catch fish. But more importantly, I was finding little points on this pebbly gravel stuff that would kind of stick out into the lake or a small circle of it. And it would look like a bunch of little chunk rocks that were down on the bottom. That is what those fish were sitting on. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video talking about some smallmouth bass, but more importantly, some post-spawn bass fishing. I know this video is a little bit different than what I usually do, but if you like these lake breakdowns or some map breakdowns on where these fish go in different times of the year to help you catch more bass, let me know down in the comments so I can keep making them, or let me know if you don't like them so I can stop making them as well, and we can make some other videos on top of that. And go ahead and check this video out right here if you find some of these rock piles. Try this drop shot bait down in there. It's been catching a bunch of fish and it'll catch them on these rock piles as well. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching.